Great. Thank yes, you. We'll see them. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. I really love this uh, lightning talk format, but nobody told me I was going to go between Rajiv and Shauna. So, boy, uh, tough, tough act to follow and tough act to proceed. Uh, and anyway, glad to be here. Good morning, everybody coming to you from Los Angeles, California. I want to share today some information about a project we implemented here in California, uh, supporting students to develop a student advocacy toolkit. My partners in the uh, in the project were, uh, whoops, sorry, can I have some technical difficulties here? Hold on a second. Sorry, everybody. Um, my, my partners in, in the project were uh, uh, our good friend, Barbara Olowski, a longtime uh, open education advocate in the United States, and Ryan Erickson Kulas with the Michelson 20 Million Minds Foundation, uh, headquartered here in Los Angeles. Um, today, we would like, I would like to, let's see if I can, my slides, uh, like to share with you uh, why we developed a project to support OER student advocates. Secondly, how do we engage them? And finally, identify some lessons learned. Uh, for me, the being here uh, participating in OE Global makes me think about the uh, story of uh, of uh, student advocates, really in the in the framework of OE Global and and uh, the increasing participation and presence of students uh, in in the global OER movement or field. Uh, I think back to uh, the OE Global Conference in Cape Town in 2017, when at the end of the conference, uh, our friend Jenny Heyman uh, uh, raised her hand. And, and challenged all of us to, 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 to ask ourselves, where are the students? Why aren't there more students here? Uh, and and uh, if you look at the conference uh, this year, the conference program this year, or even at the conference program for the Open Ed 2020 conference last week, there were a lot of uh, sessions devoted to student participation, student activism, which is terrific. Um, I don't want to give. I don't. I don't know if we can give Jenny the the entire credit for this, but certainly she helped me to think about the importance of uh, centering students uh, in our efforts. Uh, later that year, in 2017, at the Open Ed Conference in uh, in Anaheim, California, uh, there was a wonderful opening keynote panel featuring students from Santa Ana College. Uh, the following year, OE Global uh, recognized uh, student work with the uh, first uh, Open Education Student Award. I, I was super, super uh, honored to have a student from my institution. Uh, Natalie Miller received that, received that award. She had done a lot of great work with us uh, at College of the Canyons, uh, implementing a, or developing and implementing a marketing campaign. Uh, and she helped me to think about the, or understand the power of involving students in our open education programs, which seems like a, such an obvious, such an obvious uh, step to take. Uh, then last year, our uh, when we when the OE OE Global Conference was hosted by our friend Paolo Paolo in Milan, uh, she uh, organized a a student panel as the opening keynote. So uh, there's been a lot of great work uh, in the past couple of years to really center the student experience and the student voice here in open education. Um, this this made me think, and uh, and and my friend Barbara. Uh, helped us to think about what we could do in California, in our massive state of California. You see some statistics here on the screen about how large the, the, the higher education systems are in California. In the California Community Colleges in which I work, we have 115 institutions serving over 2 million students, 62,000 faculty, our state university system. You see the statistics on the right-hand side, also massive system. There's, there are many pockets of innovation and, and work with ZTC degrees and, and OER in, in both systems. Uh, and we wanted to do something to uh, really raise up the student voice and to uh, help uh, center uh, the students in the, uh, in the, the developing uh, open education space in California. So we were, Barbara and I were very fortunate to have the support of the Michael's 20 Million Minds Foundation to uh, develop a student advocacy coalition uh, that would permit us to recruit students, uh, train them, engage them, and most importantly, pay students, honor their work, uh, pay them to uh, work as student advocates. Uh, the ultimate output for them would be uh, developing a student advocate toolkit that could be used by other students to uh, learn how to become an advocate for OER. Uh, we uh, engaged and leveraged the existing network of institutions in California uh, 
uh, to identify eight students from uh, three from different community colleges and three from state universities. Uh, we recruited them, we trained them in OER basics, we uh, trained, gave them some training on how to use OER Commons, which would be the ultimate uh, destination for the Student Advocate Toolkit. And we also uh, gave them some support uh, in public speaking, in outreach, how do you uh, differentiate uh, approaching a faculty member versus approaching a member of the community versus working with the student government versus working with uh, your public boards. Um, and most importantly, I think, we encouraged them and they really took this on themselves to build a community of practice uh, as, as their working group so that they were uh, helping each other. Uh, just to, just to want to share a couple, a couple of highlights of the stories of the students we were able to work with. Uh, some friends uh, at Grossmont College in, in Southern California uh, had already engaged some students uh, on internships uh, to learn about open educational resources. So you see two young men right here uh, who were involved in the project and uh, they were they were they're, they're the first people first uh, people in their families to uh, attend higher education uh, and they were incredibly uh, honored and enthusiastic uh, to to uh, support the idea of open, open educational resources as you can imagine uh, and it is uh, as all of you know once students start learning about open educational resources they they quickly grasp the uh, the power uh, particularly if they're coming from life circumstances that have not been filled with privileges um, another great student we worked with, uh, Jennifer at uh, San, San Jose State University. Uh, she was an immigrant, first, first in her family to attend higher education as well. Uh, was a wonderful student ambassador for open educational resources on her campus, organizing uh, on-campus events and conferences. Um, uh, overall, we, we worked really hard to engage the students in teamwork. On the, on the left-hand side, you'll see an image of us uh, in our first meeting coming together to uh, introduce ourselves to, to our students and them to one another. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see a picture of some of us last year uh, at the Open Ed Conference in Phoenix, uh, sharing out uh, uh, our, our project as well. So uh, it was a fa fantastic journey with these young people as they learned about OER and learned to trust themselves, learned to become more, uh, more effective advocates on their, on their own campuses and across the state. Um, the, Final output of the project, as I mentioned, was a, a toolkit, a, um, a collection of resources. Uh, you'll see so here on the screen some of the some of the major topics covered in the toolkit, ranging from what is OER and why do we need it to how to create OER, uh, how to market OER, and then OER activism on your campus and beyond your campus. Uh, those of you who who may have worked uh, in these areas before will recognize many uh, adoptions and adaptations of existing resources uh, in, in, in this work. Uh, one, of the, one of the great things I think about the, what our students did was to adapt it for use in California. You make it, make it, make it contextual and useful for, uh, for their realities in our system. Uh, you can find the toolkit uh, at these links. You can go uh, follow the links. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, or and or uh, you can go to OER Commons and search for the OER Student Advocate Toolkit. And a uh, few lessons learned, challenges on one on the one hand and lessons learned on the other hand, um, working with, let's say, young people and oftentimes people who, for whom this was their first uh, formal engagement. Uh, uh, Timelines and paperwork sometimes were a challenge, uh, getting people to respond, getting people to fill out paper or paperwork and turn it in. Uh, so of course you have to be flexible, you have to be explicit. Um, uh, if you're asking somebody to turn in an, invo an invoice, of course it might be, they might not know what the word invoice means. So you have to be patient and, and uh, very explicit and walk them through what, what that means and why it's important. Uh, One minute remaining. Thank you. Uh, communication channels were quite interesting. We had, we had expected uh, our students to communicate in some, in some ways via email and some, some shared space on OER Commons we had created, but uh, they really just liked to uh, engage in group chat and they were very comfortable working Google Docs and so on. So you have to be ready to learn uh, where, where they are and accept them where they are. Um, terminology for their roles differed all over, all over their institutions. So. Uh, it was important for us to understand and adapt to the local context. Uh, we also, uh, in, in many cases, encountered uh, challenges or the students encountered challenges in not really being recognized or valued by their own institutions. So um, if you're considering 
uh, engaging students in similar kinds of work across institutions, I would suggest connecting with the administration at their host institutions or home institutions so that the home institution can understand the value that they're bringing to their institutions as ambassadors.